Okay, Jim, we're scheduled for 10 rounds. You got your instructions earlier. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Both your trunks are good. Touch them up. Let her buck. Well, that's... I made two promises at the top of the night. One, I kept already. I didn't sing. And I know there's a couple... <laughs> was that difficult to keep? No, no, it was Were not, you tempted? No, it was easy. <laughs> that was an easy one. Now, I expect to keep right, my right second promise. Right, I don't right break here. promises. And that go. this fight... What? will be interesting. I hope so, as Fortuna spins out of the corner to start the fight. There's a danger zone for Franco in the first three rounds here against Fortuna, and that danger zone is because Fortuna's very explosive early on. He's been, he's 15 of his 16 knockouts are in the first two rounds, and the other was in the third round. So danger early and even more danger i think added to that for franco because he's been inactive nine and a half months since he was last in the ring and before that he was off 10 months so that inactivity can mean rust and that mean you could get caught early on but right now dad get that out of there that ring pad with the advertising getting in the legs or in the way a moment ago. Stop, stop, well, that stop. kinetic style stop, of stop Fortuna, stop he was just all over the place. He reached out, extended with one of the legs, and he hit that soft advertisement pyramid across from us. Well, you see Fortuna. He's in Southpaw. He's oh, here go the legs. Go the legs. Hey, We've been having this problems all night. Two or three night long, times tonight. Why, but... As the house lights have gone off, and then they've gone uh, to look, the emergency backup lights before we regain lights. I'm for keeping TV. my promise. I said this would be interesting. Give me a lights stool, going out. Down, very stool, interesting. And typically, Fortuna has Bring a way of putting the lights in, out on his opponents. Bring your stool. They're going to get the fighters on their stools here and keep them warm as we're going to send it back to Todd Grisham in the Friday Night Fight Studio while we try to fix things here in Oklahoma. Well, that was more exciting than anything we saw in the Centrum fight, right? The lights have gone out in Oklahoma. When they resume, we'll take you back out there again. It is our main event in action. The lights have gone out. Hopefully, we get our act together out there at the casino. See you in a minute. Welcome back to Friday Night Fights. A bit of a bizarre scene right now at the Buffalo Run Casino and Resort in Miami, Oklahoma. Our main event between Luis Franco and Javier Fortuna has been delayed because of a power outage. As soon as the lights come back on, we'll send you back out there. But for now, more with me. Aren't you lucky? Some outstanding action over the weekend, though, to tell you about. We'll start with Andre Berto taking on Soto Carras. Berto was once billed as the next big thing after 27 straight wins. He was trying to avoid his third loss in his last four fights, and this is a very good contest. First round action, Carras backing Berto into the ropes, landing a flurry of punches. Berto injured his right shoulder, said he separated it, was basically fighting with one arm in the later stages of this fight, and it caught up to him in the 12th round as Berto gets caught right there with a brutal left hook, and that would do it. The referee had seen it up. Berto, a two-time former welterweight champion, goes down in defeat. It's now time to look like a champ presented by Just For Men and the biggest victory of his career. Soto Carras just plain outworked the former two-time welterweight champ Andre Berto and route to a 12-round TKO. According to CompuBox, he attempted over 1,300 punches, over 700 more than Berto. He outlanded him 322 to 134 in power shots. Earlier, on the same car, Omar Figueroa taking on Nihito Aragawa. And this fight, ladies and gentlemen, was perhaps the most action packed you'll ever see. Early in the second round, Arakawa goes down. He was dazed, but would show some samurai spirit. He would not stop fighting. He would go down again in the sixth round, but he would respond and come back. In the 11th round, Arakawa landing his own bevy of punches putting Figueroa in a precarious position. Figueroa said he was waiting for a fight where he'd be pushed to the limit and would bleed. This was that fight. 
In the end, though, too much from Figueroa. He moves to 22-0-1 as he wins by a unanimous decision. All right, again, the lights are still out in Oklahoma, but they weren't out in the month of July. We had some fantastic bouts, and right now we show you some of them. It's the best of Friday Night Fights from the month of July. Yeah. You and my warriors at. You and my warriors at. That was the best of July. This is the worst of August. The lights are out right now. The last time I remember a fight like this, two fighters sitting on their stool waiting for action to resume. Louis Bo 2, remember that? The fan man fight. But right now it's Franco and Fortuna waiting for action to resume. We'll be back in a minute. This is what happened moments ago with 141 remaining in round number one between Fortuna and Franco as the lights went out here at the event center at the Buffalo Run Casino Resort in Miami. And the good news is we have light. Listen, if it can happen at the Super Bowl at the Superdome, I think we can forgive the Buffalo Run Casino in Miami, Oklahoma. But we are back to action as they will Ready? continue Lisa, on here Lisa, with round box. one. But Teddy obviously always concerns when athletes are in the midst of going at it and then they have to sit. Do they stay warm? Are they ready to go again? Well, if it was a baseball game, the pitchers would get a chance to warm up. These fighters did not get a chance to warm up, so now more danger of getting caught cold, of getting nailed a big shot. And there's already danger in that with the explosive Fortuna, who I said earlier, 15 of the 16 knockouts in the first two rounds, the other in the third round. So there's danger for Franco, and Franco, as I said earlier also, coming off nine and a half months of inactivity. But now, Franco, maybe being a little cold, maybe adds to that danger. Look for Franco dealing with Fortuna, the southpaw. Look for him to throw right hands. They usually work with southpaws. The reason I said this is an interesting match is, first, I knew the lights would go off. That's number one. And the second reason is that as I was saying in the opening, Fortuna's had it all his way. He's a very talented guy, but my question is, is he a talented front runner? This is the best he's been in there. What happens after three rounds if Mr. Franco is still there and not just surviving, trying to win? No, he's surviving what uh, was an extended first round. Another network has boxing after dark. We've had boxing in the dark here in Miami. We come to the end of round number. How do you one. score this round? How, do the judges remember who's winning yeah. early? That's very interesting. Very good point, Teddy. Stay with us. We'll talk about it. Teddy, we're heading west next week. Going to be at the Morongo Casino in Cabazon, California. Are we west now? And kind of a breadbasket. Okay. In the middle of the country here. Okay. Big country here. Yeah, Miami, right. against the Missouri border. Anyways, we got Rustam Nagayev against. Jose Hernandez, lightweights next week. Nagayev we've seen before, 24 wins. Hernandez, 14-6-1. Jose Pedrezo, 13-0 in the, in the co-feature there. Well, right now, the southpaw and the more experienced, at least more experienced in the pros, Fortuna trying to be the boss. Both these fighters like to get a little loose and drop their hands on the outside where they're out of range. Like that? Yeah, like that, like Fortuna's doing right now. Why? Well, they feel they're loose. They feel that they have, they trust their instincts, they trust their reflexes, that they can get their punches off before their opponent can get into damaging scoring positions. And I always think it's dangerous to trust 
your reflexes and your pure skills first. Back it up with good technique. You know, use those good skills, those instincts, those reflexes, use them, but with good technique. You know, the case in point for me would be, you look at a James Watch Tony, out. fought late into his out. career, and he was able to because he had good technique to go with his skills. And then you had a guy like Roy Jones, couldn't do it late in his career because he didn't have good technique to go with his skills. That would be James lights out, Tony, just like we had the first round for more on that. Here's Bernardo. Bernardo? You know, there was apparently a crash in the city of Miami, Oklahoma. It was a car crash, took out a transformer. That's why the lights went off initially. Then we went to the power generator, the backup generator locally here at the casino. That overheated, and that caused the total blackout we had just a few minutes ago in round one. Bernie Asuna, local news here in Oklahoma. He's got, I mean, uh, the, guy's, I just, the guy's reporting on car crashes in Miami. Out. Well, we Tell hope out. it was, I, I mean, I just hope it wasn't Saul on a motorcycle. <laughs> You know, because he was looking at those Stop. motorcycles, Stop. he was drawing, Break, back. looking to take one of them out on the road. Fox. Look, in all seriousness, obviously we hope that nobody was injured in that car accident, and we're glad to have light. We're glad to have Bernard let us oh, know what's going on. It does more than down. just locker room reports, though. I mean, that's yeah. We're, we're getting the skin. We appreciate all that, and right now we would appreciate a little bit more action in his chess match. We're used to seeing it with Fortuna. Yeah, but he's never been in with this caliber right. of a fighter before. As Franco was clear to point out, time and time again, and leading into this fight. And that's where you get a little tentativeness, a little hesitation, because you're throwing punches that normally would land, and guess right, what? Yeah. They're hitting the air, and when they hit the air, you know you could be open potentially for a counter, so you get a little stop, stop, stop. bit more reserved, and that's what's going on Lux. right now. Against the 2004 Olympian from Cuba, Luis Franco. I gave the last round to, round to Fortuna. Basically, for the most part, on this punch, take another look at it. The right hook from the southpaw in between a wide punch from Franco. We talked about both fighters. They dropped their hands a little bit right there. You can see Franco loose with his hands down. Didn't cover with his left hand. He paid the price. Wide punch. Hook in between, no cover, clean punch landed by Fortuna. Maybe enough to win a round that really wasn't a lot happening. And he opened up this third round with another right hook, did the undefeated southpaw, Fortuna. And that punch can be the most effective, damaging, dangerous punch for a southpaw when he's facing an orthodox fighter. And it can be really a difficult punch for the orthodox fighter to deal with because he's just not used to that punch coming from that angle. His peripheral vision just not really adjusted to having to pick up that punch because when he's fighting orthodox fighters, that would be a straight right hand. Yeah. It wouldn't be a hook coming from the corner of his left eye. Fortuna now picks up the pace. Oh, it's a good uppercut that got in the mix there. There's a left uppercut stop, in the middle back, of that back, exchange stop, stop, from stop, Fortuna. First three rounds, Oops. danger zone. But something interesting brewing here. What's that? Well, Fortuna predicted a third round knockout. Put himself out there. Yeah, put himself out. That could be dangerous. If you don't get it, what happens? Did you fail? You know, this is a mental game. Do you get discouraged? Do you start to slow down and think about it while the other guy starts to speed up? One of the intangibles that is part of a fight. <laughs> and that Fortuna made part of this fight by making that prediction. You see the bouncing with Fortuna just being more lively. You know, he's seven years younger, so he figures he's the, the strider of the two guys, maybe the more energetic of the two guys, but he's got the style really to carry that. He uses his legs a lot more than Franco does. He goes in and out. He's got an advantage on hand speed. You know, he's a little more dimensional. He can fight inside, but he can also box on the outside, as he's shown. He can pick spots. For the most part, Franco needs to be set to punch, and I think needs to be close in this fight. Close inside, be able to work that body. Take some of those legs away. Punch out, punch out. From right Man's now, free, as I said, out. the more versatile Fortuna. Stop, 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 stop. Right, back to the hand. Box.
There's Fortuna with those hands down again when he's out at range before he makes that decision to come in. Franco's only going to win two ways. One, if he catches Fortuna coming in with that check hook I talked about. He just tried it there. And the other is if he gets inside and can start working. He's not winning if the fight stays in these dimensions on the outside. Where's the referee? He doesn't see this. Watch that. There's the uppercut, but look at this. Referee's not in position to see. Holding behind the head by Fortuna. Watch. There it is. Holding behind the head by Fortuna, and then the left uppercut. Hold the head in place where it can't move, where it can't see the punch coming, and then throw the left uppercut. And the referee was on the side that the punch was coming, stop, stop, but stop, not stop, the stop, side stop, stop, to stop. see the arm behind Low the head. Low blow. Low blow. You okay? Give me time, give me time. They're going to give Franco upwards of five minutes if he wants it with the low blow there to open up this fourth round. That left uppercut was by far the best punch landed of that last round. And Franco says he's back to action here. You know, strange circumstance that we discussed earlier with Franco, Teddy. We thought we were going to see Franco fight for the title against Billy Dibb back in March and all of a sudden we were I mean we knew the fight was there we were preparing for the fight and then all of a sudden we heard oh he's going to retire stop, from stop, the stop, sport stop. and there was a miscommunication with his management Box. Henry Foster at the time said he pulled out he stopped training I can't explain it unless it was a psychotic episode now we understand that that Franco really never signed on for the fight uh, did not retire stayed in training and then he gets this opportunity here a big fight against Fortuna well there's two bottom lines to that story one is he missed a great opportunity to fight for the title he lost the title uh, and you know against i think a less talented fighter probably than he's facing tonight and he would have made five thousand dollars more he was complaining about the money it was twenty thousand he's making fifteen thousand tonight so those are the two bottom line points he's wound up missing an opportunity to fight and maybe win a title and now he's fighting maybe a tougher opponent for less money yeah, remember, if Jenny Granovich took that fight on short notice with the circumstances with Franco not going forward to fight, and it was Granovich's shining moment of his career in what was a very entertaining fight on Friday Night Fights. Stop, stop, stop. You know, we always talk about fighters, I talk about geography, being in the position you need to be to do the things you need to do. But that's so important also for the third man in the ring, the referee. Stop, needs stop. to be in the right position Box. to see what's going on. Very important. Has to have the instincts to be there. And a moment ago, we saw that Fortuna held a little bit behind the head and then threw the uppercut. Well, I don't know that's the last time you're going to see it. Fortuna does that. That's no accident. He uses that, and I've seen him use that before in his career. Hey, he figures if he can get away with it, he gets away with it. Hold that head in place, and you don't have a moving target. Again, the loose hands. There's a jab by Fortuna Franco. Fortuna paid a price. Yeah, the loose hands. He likes to feel loose. He likes to feel fast on the outside, depending on his reflexes. But guess what? When you throw a side technique and depend only on your reflexes, sometimes you get caught and pay a price. Franco with a good moment stop, here in the stop, final stop. 30 seconds of round four. Remember, you Box. can go to Facebook, the Friday Night Fight Facebook page, Jump in right now. Score along with Teddy Atlas. See how you compare to the ringside judges as well. Time. Watch this low blow here. Or was it a low blow? Watch as Franco pulls away a little bit. Did that punch even land? I mean, it was aimed low. There's no doubt about that. You can see the punch from Fortuna was aimed low, but... You also saw Franco, you know, move the lower body back a little bit. And it almost looked like that punch may not have landed. But either way, no harm, no foul, no point taken away, just a warning. Round five scheduled for 10. We talked so much about the power of Fortuna. We've seen him with spectacular early knockouts on Friday night fights, but then again has had a 10-round decision and a 12-round decision in two of his last five, although we know what the power is capable of doing from stop, him, as stop, we've stop. witnessed. Let's look at the... Scorecards here in the opening moments here of round five. Teddy has it 39-37. Franco, nice effort in the fourth round, taking the first round on Teddy's scorecard. You, the fan at home on Facebook, four rounds to zip in favor of the undefeated 22-0 Javier 
for Tuna. No, they have it for Franco. Did, did they really? They had it Excuse for, me, they had for, it for Franco. Franco. Yeah. Wow. An upset brewing, my at least with the fans. deceiving me just with the assumption there. There no, it is. Of course, there. I could see that. And I was a little bit stunned myself. Well, the fans definitely have an upset brewing. I don't have one. Not yet. Well, let's look at the total punches that CompuBox has put together. CompuBox, I mean, they throw a very similar amount, 189 to 183, landing similar amounts. Um, Fortune obviously had that big left uppercut that we highlighted, had the punch earlier that you said single-handedly you felt carried the round. Right now, for the most part, box. you see, punch is a little bit, you know, reckless, jumping in a little bit. And I, Again, I think you're going to see an opportunity. You saw that lead left no, hand no, a moment no, no, ago by no. Fortuna. That's why Back I didn't fight plan the way I did it. Box. Fortuna with that speed, he'll get a little reckless. He'll jump in with that lead left hand. And as I said in the fight plan, a chance to time him coming in. And I think that's what Franco's looking for a little bit. Looking to time him. You see he's given ground, but he gave too much ground that time. And paid a price. Box. Fortuna walked in with a left hand. Scored with that left there. Franco was against the ropes for a moment as he came forward. Now he stops and pops. Stop, stop, stop. Again, Fortuna, the undefeated fighter, trying to be the boss, trying to be aggressive in spots, in and out, show his dimension. But he's missing more than he's ever missed in his career before with the experience. Franco, and when I say experience, I mean because of his amateur background. He was an Olympian for... Cuban team also took part in the world championships won gold at 112 pounds back in 2003 and had 400 fights so that is experience coming to the halfway mark here scheduled for 10 and a 5 Time. take a look here as Fortuna comes forward with the left hand Franco goes back that's a no-no Pulling straight back, and he gets caught in the path of the punch. Now, you saw there Fortuna for the young fighters at home or aspiring fighters at home. You could see Fortuna drop that left hand for the uppercut, expose himself, and let it be shown that it was coming. Franco decided to go defensive and pull out. If Franco had decided to fill the hole mm -hmm. and go offensive and punch, well, that opportunity was there, and it will be there all night long. Uh -oh. Back That's head. up stop, to the stop, corner stop. now Again, to point that head. out Box. to Franco. That, yeah, you got caught with the left hand, the left uppercut, because you pulled back, but he dropped it to throw it. If you would have stepped in instead of pulling back, guess what? You might have landed, you might have dropped him. Talked about the amateur experience of Franco. He's seven years stop. older stop. than Fortuna, 31 years old. Box. Defected to the United States through Mexico in 2009. He's Lone loss was a real slow, methodical fight. It was in Argentina against Mauricio Munoz. Lost a split decision, many feeling he deserved that win. So he comes in as a 31-year-old with an 11-1 mark. That's what Franco needs to do. Instead of just trying to walk in and get inside, he needs to start using that jab to stabilize the outside a little bit. And then do that. Then be aggressive. One of the advantages for Fortuna, oh, I've talked about it, you've seen it, he's got better legs, a little quicker hands, more dimension to him. He's also got the ability, if he wants, stop, to go stop, inside stop. too, because he's the bigger man. Fortuna turned Box. pro 135, lightweight, fought nine times between lightweight and junior lightweight, and the rest of at featherweight, while Franco stop, has stop, fought stop, all stop, the fights, stop, stop. Joe, at featherweight. Box. So it's funny, the smaller guy, Franco, needs to be the bigger guy. He needs to get inside and act like the bigger guy. And this is where he needs to do it. When he's in close, keep his hands free and work. Right now, for me, Fortuna trying to impose his will on Franco. Just trying to kind of keep the motion going and the body language going that he's the boss and try to discourage Franco a little bit. 
and you can see it. There's an example of it right yeah, here. Yeah, just taking those it. steps forward, chasing him down, just, just running into it. Exactly. Kind of like what Margarito did with Cotto the first fight. Right. You know, when he just Start picking back. up the feet and just keep coming at him, keep coming, keep coming. You impose your will. Your mindset on the other guy, you start to make him feel like he can't stop what's coming after him. Had a little pop left hand off the hip moments ago that got his attention. Hip up. Rustem Nogaev and Jose Hernandez, the main event next week for a 10 o'clock Eastern start time on Friday Night Fights. From California, Nagaya Fernandez, next week, 10 o'clock Eastern start time. You know, Franco has beaten two southpaws, but we haven't seen really any of that. Oh, good uppercut there. Any of that proof here tonight of what that blueprint has been for him to beat southpaws. He's looked Southpaw. lost in there so far with Fortuna. But you would think you would try to build around the confidence with Franco that, yeah, you've beaten two lefties. Go beat another one. But, stop, again, you haven't stop, seen right. anything to suggest that Franco would have known how to beat a softball. He's not throwing right hands. He's getting inside where he has to win now. Punch out, punch out. And he puts stop, his hands stop, behind right, Fortuna, Box. where he knows he can't punch when he does that. So you have to wonder about the mindset right now as far as confidence of Franco. He gets in close where he knows he can't win on the outside. He knows now. He knows he got to uh, win in here. Uh, and he's not stop, looking stop, to win. Stop, stop, Back in the, so the confidence, the discipline Bucks. lacking in Franco right now. Franco has a habit because he's had Break. so many Bucks. amateur fights where he'll pull back anticipate a punch and pull back to make it miss and if you don't do it perfect you pull back into the punch and you get caught if you do it perfect you make it fall short you can counter but again i'd rather do it with good technique slip the punch weave the punch block the punch don't or, stay in the lane of it stop. exactly or stop, even beat the guy to the ball but don't risk yourself Box. by breaking the rules by pulling back from the punch and you're hoping that your reflexes are perfect A lot of defense from Franco, but on my scorecard, he needs offense. Again, you see the body language, you see, and you see the confidence growing with Fortuna, just imposing himself in a way that he's almost shouting, shouting out. Stop! I'm the better Look guy. I'm the boss. On there, Teddy. Yeah, holding... almost yelling. I'm the boss. Sucks. I'm the better guy. It's been evident the last two and a half rounds. Stop, Who's that stop. great Dominican pitcher, Pedro Martinez? Box. He used to yell, "Who's your daddy?" He used to say that when he was playing against the Yankees. Well, it's almost like that's what Fortuna's saying. Who's your daddy? Fortuna from the Dominican Republic. Stop, stop, break, step back. Train step back. out of Southern California. Time. ESPN Friday Night Fights is presented by Corona Extra. Proud sponsor of Friday Night Fights and as always encourages you to relax responsibly. And in part by Papa John's Sausage Sensation Pizza. Only $11. And by Energizer Ultimate Lithium. That's positive energy seen plenty of positive energy in the fast rising career of Javier Fortuna 22 and 0 16 knockouts and we're going to take control here in the second half of this scheduled 10 rounder against Luis Franco stop come back here's something to consider Box. but it hasn't shown itself but I'm still going to say it both these guys terrific amateurs mm -hmm. and if this was an amateur bout say in the Olympics Franco, instead of Fortuna, would probably be the favorite. Yes, I would agree. Yes. Because he's from Cuba. And more accomplished amateur career, longer amateur career. Exactly. Cuba has dominated the Olympics for a couple of decades now. And, you know, you just, 
It's a little surprised that that mindset stop, stop, Rex, hasn't that's been that's captured, that's hasn't been shown by Franco, Rex. where it's carried over here in the pros, where he would have a little confidence going in there and saying, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to be able to dominate through the way people have dominated stop, everybody in the Olympics, including, including fighters from the Dominican Republic. And maybe if he did that early on, maybe he could have put that mindset, that kind of mentality into Fortuna. But he hasn't done that. Stop, Franco stop, was stop, shaking stop. off that straight left hand moments ago. Box. Fortuna coming in wild there with that stop, 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 lead left stop, stop, uppercut. Hey, Todd, are you watching Box. this fight, Todd? If we don't get more action here. I got to keep my promise. I might have to start singing. Are you talking to Mr. Grisham back? Yes, I am. In studio? My man. I don't like to break my word. No. One promise fulfilled. The other one were... Not stop, doing stop, stop, we're not really doing so well with it. With uh, just about seven minutes to go fight action. Can't say turn out the lights because we've turned them out already. But again, you see the looseness of Fortuna with the hands down, just wanting to pop and move. And he's being less aggressive. Let's not take everything away from Franco. You know, Fortuna has been less aggressive, and part of the reason is Franco better defensively, a better level fighter defensively Watch than out, Fortuna has faced before. Uh -uh -uh. Stop! Break! Step back! Both of you, step back. Box. No jab for Franco no. to get in. And he needs that jab to get in. But at least he got in and he did a little work. He needs to do more work when he's in there. That time he tried to place the right hand on the inside and then they tie up here. Joe and Teddy back with you here on Friday Night Fights from Miami, Oklahoma. Round nine of our main event. Franco against the undefeated Javier Fortuna. Stop, seemingly stop, stop, stop. Break, step back. taking control Box. in the middle rounds as Franco just hasn't offered up enough against the unbeaten Dominican Ring Magazine top ten featherweight. Stop, stop. Fortuna was cut over Box. his left eye two fights ago. Nothing there right now. No problem with that. Reminder, stop, if you're expecting stop. to see tennis action, Box. the 2013 Emirates Airline U.S. Open, Southern California Open, Azarenka and Radvanska going at it. That's currently starting on ESPN3, and then we will eventually get you to the women's tennis action stop, 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 from Southern stop. California. Watch the hand in Fortuna, undefeated contender, trying to stay that way in his lofty status and earn himself stop, stop, a title Rex, shot. Let's look at Teddy's scorecard. 79-73 in favor of the 24-year-old with a 22-0 mark. See, that's a perfect example where there's stop, still an stop, opportunity, stop, stop, stop. I think, from Franco, if he throws that check hook. Fortuna reaching in with the left hand, right hand a little low. That's where Franco needs to time him. Copy box numbers to see Franco a slight edge in connects, but Fortuna the much more effective. Stop, board. stop, 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 stop. Box. You know, we see who's the more active fighter, the quicker fighter, the fighter with the better legs. I said it earlier, with more dimension to him. Maybe it equates into one simple thing. Maybe it also equates into just who's the hungrier fighter. Maybe it's stop, that simple stop, stop. in certain ways. Fortuna box. grew up in a house with a dirt floor. Now he's building a house for his mother and family, which is a beautiful thing. That would make somebody hungry. Came from a family of nine in the Dominican Republic. Fortuna has been penalized for low blows in his career. Early on, you can see why, maybe. I mean, he threw a low blow early on again. He, it was when he was pulling the head down on Franco a little bit and punched straight a little low. Right now, 
Franco almost hopes that Fortuna would throw a low blow so he could get a point somewhere. See, this is bad, bad news for Franco. Ten seconds. Grabbing inside instead of fighting inside, especially when he's behind. Before we get to the 10th round, let's check in with Todd. Thank you, Joe. Friday Night Fights in two weeks heads to one of the great boxing cities in the country, Chicago, Illinois. We'll be at U.S. Cellular Field right over home plate. That's right. In a baseball stadium, Arthur Spielkin, Mike Malo in a rematch for perhaps one of the best fights we've had on Friday Night Fights this year. Plus, Polish fighter Andrzej Sfonfara taking on Gabriel Campillo. That's August 16th, 9 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Too. By the way, Teddy, you promised a good fight. I told my mom to watch. You owe her a strongly written letter, an apology. Please, she'll be waiting. Oh, Teddy. Okay, I don't have a stamp right now, but the letter will be, the letter will be put together. And uh, you think she would watch just to see her son? No, I mean, yeah, you got Todd there. I'm sure she likes that. I'm sure she does. And I'm sorry if I disappointed her. I take my promises very seriously. That heavyweight rematch coming up in Chicago, that first fight was an all-out war in a heated environment. I mean, those fans there in Chicago were cranked up for that first go-round. They're doing the next one at U.S. Cellular Field right there in the baseball diamond. That's going to be a special evening of Friday Night Fights on August 16th. Tenth and final round here with Fortuna and Franco. No, stop, 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 no, uh, uh, uh. Box. Stop, stop, stop. Now Ritter getting involved, Box. the referee, Gary Ritter. That was his brother, Gerald Ritter. You saw earlier as the referee in the purple shirt that we had in our first fight, Batista and Kermit Stop, 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 stop. Cintron won a unanimous the decision, the former welterweight titleist. If you're just joining us in a fight that doesn't really tell you much about his stop, future. Stop, in the stop. Sport. Quit wrestling. Box, rest, don't wrestle. Box. Again, the body language, the pressure, the aggression is all there with the guy who's winning. Fortuna. Just pushing Franco back. Not doing damage necessarily with punches. Franco moves his head fairly well, but just being the boss. And winning stop, round. Stop, stop, stop. Still mauling on the inside. Box. Franco doing more surviving than he's doing winning. Yes, though. look at that right hand. I think the one who I'm going to get to write a letter of apology to Todd's mom is Franco. I'm not taking all no, the no, blame no, for this. No, I'm trying, no, I'm trying to good. get out of this a little bit. But you have to take responsibility. I said it would be interesting. I didn't say it would be a great fight, but I did say it would be interesting. Is this interesting? Stop, 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 stop. Maybe some it. people don't nice think it is. Box. Stop, 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 stop. Box. Well, I'm always going to be up for watching Fortuna and seeing what he offers with his explosiveness and athleticism. We've had a lot of great highlights with him in the course of the past two years, and surely there will be more to come. Stop, 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 stop. Listen, stick to that. Box. They go the distance here in Miami. We will come back and hear from the judges. Stay with us. More to come. Bulletproof Punch of the Night brought to you by Just for Men. Not a lot of action in stop, this stop, main stop. event, but here's round five, the uppercut from Fortuna. What was interesting with Fortuna stepping up against a much more experienced guy than he's seen before, but 
Not scintillating and explosive the way we've seen past Fortuna fights. CompuBox total punch stats you see there. Franco had an edge, 127 to 109. Teddy's scorecard, you know, in the second half of that fight, you really saw the mindset of Fortuna feeling like he had ownership of the fight and was getting after Franco. Teddy saw it 99-91. Let's find out how the judges saw it. And for that, we send it up to Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Chris Ritter scores it 99 to 91 in favor of Franco. Judge Jerry Griffin scores it 96 to 94 in favor of Fortuna. And Judge David Sutherland scores it 95 to 95 even this bout is a split what the heck are these judges watching well 99 91 what are Franco these judges watching by chris ritter i mean, I mean those, those scores were spray painted all over the place i mean those scores I mean, were we have a serious widespread problem. look we have a serious problem in this business of boxing and you know before this sport becomes more irrelevant irrelevant than it already is. 